Aw oh, yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech. And today I'll be reviewing the Tronsmart Orion R28 Pro. This is the first Android media player that I've tested that uses the new Rockchip 3288 CPU. This processor uses A17 cores instead of the A9 cores that we've seen in so many boxes in the past. So will this new CPU give us a big speed upgrade and how much more performance will we see? We'll take a look at that, but first let's go over some of the features. So the new 3288 SoC is running at 1.8 gigahertz and like I said before, it's running the new A17 architecture. It's also got upgraded graphics with the Mali T764 CPU, which now supports the upcoming H265 video codec. H265 is what they're going to use to compress 4K down enough to be able to stream it, but it's going to be a little bit more CPU intensive, so we need processors to support it. This box comes with not only 10 100 Ethernet, but also 1 gigabit Ethernet, which a lot of people have been looking forward to. Inside, it's got 2 gigs of DRAM, 16 gigs of flash memory, Bluetooth 4.0, Android KitKat 4.4 with an over-the-air update option coming soon. And it can play 4K videos and output to a 4K TV. It comes with this simple IR remote control which runs on AAA batteries. It gives you the basics and includes an air mouse that's super slow and probably only intended to be used if you get stuck in an app. The T28 doesn't even have a toggle friendly launcher either so you'll want to buy an air mouse remote as soon as you can. I'll add a link in the description to some remotes that I recommend. And here's what I saw the first time I booted up the T28. It's not too polished but this is a pre-release version so hopefully they'll clean it up when the final version comes out. Updates are pretty easy on here as well. I've already updated it once using a micro SD card copying a file to it and then just simply rebooting and it installed the updates. And Tronsmart is promising over-the-air updates in the future, so upgrading should be much easier from here on out. Here you can see some of the apps that come pre-installed on here. So it's got webcam support, an app for DNLA streaming. Here's a super user app, so it does come pre-rooted. It's got a Wi-Fi display app for screen mirroring, but it wasn't working too well for me. It's got XBMC as well. We'll take a look at the video playback in just a minute, but first I'm going to configure the player with some of my favorite apps so you can see how to make it look better. First off, I installed Nova Launcher Prime on here. Nova Launcher is going to be my new standard launcher because it's a lot less resource intensive than Go Launcher 3D. It looks great and is super responsive and fast. Plus, it's highly customizable. I'm running a custom icon pack from Bionic Themes called Android L, and the wallpaper is called Earth and Moon in HT Gyro 3D Pro. I also added widgets for music and podcast playback for easy access. And since the R28 came pre-rooted, I can use Ultimate Backup Pro to back up the entire configuration for next time. So one more thing that's cool about Nova Launcher is that you can use it to set your wallpaper, and it won't crop much of the image off. So I just choose Wallpaper, and then choose Nova Launcher, and I've got a 9x16 image here, and choose OK. And here you can see it's almost cropped none of the picture. Just another reason I'll be using Nova Launcher a lot more often. Now it's time for benchmarks, but let's start off by getting a little bit of processor information here. This has got the Rockchip 3288 quad-core CPU, which uses the ARM A17 processor core instead of the A9, so it's going to be much faster and more efficient now. It also uses the Mali T764 quad-core GPU, which is actually really fast and looks great on games. We'll show you that in a few minutes. First up, I ran Linpack to get a basic idea of the CPU performance, and it scored an average of 250. This is a really good score, but the ProBox 2 that I just reviewed actually got 300, so hopefully there's just some software optimization that needs to be done to get a higher score. And next up is Antutu, and it got a very nice overall system score of 37,197. That's the second highest score I've gotten behind the ProBox 2 EX, and Minix X8 gets about 30,000 on this version of Antutu. And again, this firmware is still a little bit under development, so the score could get better as it's tweaked a little bit more. And now we come to video playback on the Tronsmart Orion R28. And this is 4K video playing on a 4K TV using MX Player, but let's check out XBMC first. So XBMC's video playback is pretty good on here. I can play a 1080p 60 frames per second video file from my camcorder with sound, and the video looks pretty nice and smooth. Here you can see what it looks like. Now I did see a few frame skips, mainly when you start a video, or you might be able to see it in this pan, just the slightest frame skip, but it's very subtle, so hopefully it's something that can get worked out with an update to up XBMC. 
Next up, I ran the 4K video test on XBMC, and it did play the video with sound, and it looks really nice, but it's just really choppy, too choppy to watch. So we're gonna need either a ROM update or an XBMC update to be able to get decent 4K video in XBMC. Luckily, MX Player worked great for playing 4K video. It was nice and smooth and didn't drop any frames, plus it looked great. And of course, it could play 1080p video as well. I also tested two H.265 videos, one 720p and one 4K, and MX Player could play them both. But the audio slowed down MX Player in the 4K version. XBMC could not play the H.265 files at all. We're going to be seeing H.265 a lot in the future because it's a super compressed 4K format that looks good, so it should become more popular and players are going to need to be able to play it. Oh, and one last thing. I figured out what was causing that very slight frame skipping in XBMC. It was a Bluetooth speaker that I had hooked up. When I turned off the Bluetooth, the frame skipping went away. And last, but definitely not least, is gaming. Gaming on the Orion R28 is really good. It's fast and smooth because of the new GPU. I couldn't get my Bluetooth controller, the G910, to connect, so I hooked up a USB Xbox 360 controller and it worked like a charm. Everything worked and it was much less laggy than my Bluetooth controller that I've always been using. This is when I discovered the most advanced cutting edge game possibly in the world today. It just came out on Android a few days ago and it changed my life forever. It's simply amazing and it's called Goat Simulator. The game contains tons of goat simulation technology. Now you no longer have to fantasize about being a goat. The game contains millions of hilarious bugs too. Seriously though, it was a lot of fun to play and the controller worked right off the bat without any button configuration. So I had a good time playing this game. And overall I'd say gaming was the most fun on the Orion R28 because it was nice and smooth and the USB controller just worked really good. So really happy there. Anyways, Goat Simulator is $5 in the App Store and it's so worth it. It's just hours and hours of laughs. Okay guys, that wraps up my review of the Tronsmart Orion R28 Pro. It's priced pretty well, and there's also a version coming out with 32 gigs of memory on board plus 4 gigs of DRAM as well. I'll add a link to where you can get the R28 as well as all the other hardware and software you saw in the video in the description down below. I'll also add a list of the pros and cons that I discovered while testing the R28. That way if it changes I can change the list. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like that and hit that little like button, it'll really help me out. Thanks again for watching and as always, aloha.